Welcome to Trojans Live, the exclusive USC Trojans Coaches Show. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, USC. Behind the scenes insights and breaking news from interim head coach Ed Ogeron and the Enfield and the student athletes who play for the Cardinal and Gold. Throws over the middle, complete Marquise Lee. He's got it at the five in the end zone. Touchdown, USC. Trojans Live is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Visit SoCalBMW.com today to find a BMW center near you. Buy Valvoline. Charge on. But visit Valvoline Instant Oil Change first. Home of the drive through only change. And proud sponsor of USC football. Visit SoCalOilChange.com for special discounts and offers. By Allstate Insurance. Mayhem is everywhere. Start protecting yourself from mayhem with Allstate Insurance. By Western Exterminator. Providing all-star terms and pest control you can trust for over 90 years. Western Exterminator, the final word in pest control. Now, here are Jordan Moore and John Jackson. Hello and welcome to Trojans Live, presented by your Southern California BMW centers on KFWB News Talk 980. We have a big show for you tonight at the lab on the day before the day before the USC Stanford Homecoming Showdown coming up this Saturday. Tonight, we've got the head coach Ed Orgeron in the house. Plus, we'll bring on All-American wide receiver Marquise Lee and defensive captain Hayes Pillard. Later, we'll talk a little sports business as it relates to USC with CFO Steve Lopes. And finally, this week, we promise to deliver the men's basketball head coach, Andy Anfield. Uh, Andy Anfield. I am uh, Jordan Moore alongside John Jackson and J.J. What's past is prologue. It has all led up to this. You know, I, I'm still happy with what happened last week. I mean, I can't get over the way the Trojans really came out of the gates and, and beat Cal how you're supposed to beat Cal. I mean, a lot of times you play teams that you know going into the game you, you're supposed to beat and you sort of play down to their level. Wasn't the case a week ago. So, uh, you know, like I said, this team is getting better in November. That's always been the key to great Trojan teams. And I can't wait for Saturday. Now, the games to remember are played in November, and we've got one coming up this Saturday. We'll talk to Coach O about it right now. This segment is brought to you by your Southern California BMW Centers. Visit SoCalBMW.com today to find a BMW Center near you. Let's bring in the coach. And, uh, Coach, uh, it's starting to feel like old times around here. Uh, just a big game atmosphere has been building all week. Just a tremendous atmosphere all week. Great mindset by our players uh, led by Two of our greatest here, Hayes and Marquise, uh, just two tremendous players and great gentlemen, great representative of the USC Trojan family. You know, Coach, I was talking to a bunch of Trojans today, and the question came up, when can you ever remember college game day showing up for a team that isn't even ranked? I mean, you have a lot of energy around this team, so much that college game day made this the game, you know, the game of the week. Talk about some of the energy amongst these guys, because it's really tremendous, the level of play that they're playing. Um, you know, after the shaky start. You know, they're playing together as a team. Uh, they're taking ownership of the team. you got to give them credit. I said, hey, guys, cut it loose, have fun. The leadership of this team has come through. Guys are making plays. Guys are stepping up, having fun at practice. They're working hard and enjoying playing Trojan football. J.J. mentioned uh, beating Cal the way you're supposed to in, in this particular case. Uh, you know, not a great Cal team, and it really seemed like, the maturity of the team showed through. You talked about it. You said we'd find out. You know, you could say all you want all week. We'd find out whether they would handle the challenge, whether it would be up to it, bring their energy, and did you feel like they did? It started preparation. We had our best Tuesday Wednesday practice. Uh, guys were ready to go. You can hear it in the locker room. They're just excited to play for each other. It's our new season. There's a sixth game coming up. I expect them to play very well on Saturday. You know, Coach, we continue to see new wrinkles that I think is leading to a lot of success of this team. One of the things I saw last Saturday, Marcus Martin, the center, snapping the ball, pulling around, leading Buck Allen through the hole. Uh, you know, it's just innovative, some of the things that's going on. Talk about the progression of how the playbook is expanded. Well, you got to give Clay Helton credit, uh, Mike Summers and James Craig. I told them, do what we do best, and uh, they're cutting the defense. And uh, we're a zone-blocking team. Really good zone blocking team. Now we're starting to down block and kick out and use our power. And it's helping and our running backs are doing a tremendous job running the ball. You know, obviously you're a defensive coach, but when you took over this head coaching job, people asked you about the offense. And you said it'll be pretty much the same or a little bit different. You wanted your mentality to come through in the team. Do you feel like they're really developing that power run identity? Yes, I love it. And I love the physical mentality of our team. I love when our offensive line uh, keeps the ball for 12, 13 play drives and we're running the ball down the field, play action pass. With great protection. You know, Coach, one other thing that I sort of noticed, you know, my observation of the players, the coaches, everybody sort of involved, is that now they have a sense of empowerment. Yeah. You know, how, how have you sort of, you know, given that 
you know, the reins to them so that they feel like part of the process as opposed to just fitting into the process. Well, just gave the guys the ownership of the football team and said, this is your team. You can do what you want with it. We're here to coach you. I will coach it. I let them coach. They do their own rotations. Uh, really, I'm just sitting down there to uh, support everybody and doing the best job we can leading this football team. They've been tremendous. Well, John Baxter takes ownership of the special teams. That was a heck of a of a performance last yeah, week. Just a great performance. A great job by Coach Baxter and all the coaches that help him and the guys are executing 21 points in the first half. I don't think I've ever been a part of such a dominant special teams uh, performance. You know, and at the forefront of the special teams was uh, Nelson Aguilar with the punt return. One thing I didn't know is this, and, and you can confirm this for me, did he return punts in high school or is this the first time he's been back there? I think this is the first time he's been back there. You know, and it's, it's something he can do. Nelson was a a great athlete, a great get from from Tampa, Florida, and uh, he's just a tremendous young man, and he's only just begun. Everyone saw what Nelson did last week. Not everyone notices what a guy like Soma Vanuku does for your team. He goes down there on kick on kickoff coverage. He's like a wrecking ball. What does he do to set the tone for your ball club? Two weeks in a row, a dominating performer. So one up at Oregon State and again up at Cal. The guy's big, strong. He's physical. He's having fun. He's doing a great job playing fullback, catching the ball, blocking. Just a tremendous young man. And I know this radio show is getting like a broken record week after week talking about Buck Allen, but every time I get ready to turn the page and say, okay, there's enough Buck Allen talk, well, he looks even more impressive the following week. Yeah, he, what is it about him? He's grown every week. He's gotten bigger, stronger. Uh, Tommy Robinson just believes in the young man. He's tremendous. He has a great knack of cutting the defense and finding an open hole and getting up the field. Tremendous balance and feet. I call him the slasher. He just looks like he <laughs> slashes through everybody. And knowing that you had this game on the horizon, well, were you happy that you were able to rest some guys? You got to play, I think, every single person you brought on that trip. Uh, that was the most gratifying thing of the whole trip. Everybody got to play. Uh, everybody, you know, said, come off the field, coach, this is worth it. It's worth all the hard work. And they mean so much to our football team and get, got us bigger and stronger. And on the defensive side, um, you know, talk about the progression there. They were good early against Cal, but there were some rocky, rocky moments. Yeah, you know, there were some parts we didn't play well, and we know that. But uh, we're up for the challenge this week. It's going to be a big physical football game. We have to tackle, play well in the line of scrimmage, and uh, our guys are up to it, but we are ready to go. Yeah, this is uh, your kind of week. You always say greatest sound in football is the buckling of the chin strap. Well, they better better be buckled up this week. It's, it, it, is it all going to come down to that war up front? It's a big man's game. There's no time. And everybody has to play big. Not only the big men, the linebackers, the DBs, uh, wide receivers have to block down the field. This is a big man's game. You know, and that's a good point because you mentioned the receivers blocking down the field. It sort of goes unnoticed. But these runs that we're talking about with Buck and Silas and all these guys wouldn't happen if those guys aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Our receivers had their best week last year, especially blocking down the field, uh, blocking the corners, cracking the safeties, getting the ball out the edge. T. Martin and our receivers are doing a tremendous job. How similar are these two teams, uh, Stanford and USC? Well, very similar. Uh, very similar in style, very similar on the lines, uh, very similar in running back. Uh, quarterback position is uh, very similar. Guys that can make plays, uh, tough, hard-nosed football. You know, when I look at Hogan, the quarterback for Stanford, you know, he's fifth in passing efficiency, which is right in the middle of the pack. He's 11th, though, in passing yardage. You know, and I know a lot of that is due to, the, to their run game. What is it about him that makes him good? He can run the football. He can scramble, he can do a lot of things, operate, and he can throw the deep ball. I mean, you cannot relax. You have to have somebody in the post, and they will burn you. One good thing about Stanford, they're so well coached. If you make a mistake, it could be six. A reminder to fans, you can get in this broadcast by jumping on Twitter using the hashtag Trojans Live, tweeting questions for Coach O. If you want to tweet in questions for Marquise Lee and Hayes Pillard, we've got them coming up next. So we got one here uh, from Nicholas Garcia, wants to know how the – offensive line matches up with Stanford's defensive line. I know uh, as a connoisseur defensive lineman, there's, there's some fun players over there on the Stanford side that you'd like if you weren't game planning against them. Yes, uh, they're tremendous. They're finesse players. They're great rushers. Uh, we feel that we match up very well with them up front. We're going to have to play our best game, our guys up for the challenge. But you know they go against a pretty good defensive line every day. You know, from, from a mental psyche, uh, where is this USC team in terms of matching up against the, uh, against Stanford? Like, what from a player's perspective, if you're in the minds of those guys, what do they think they match up? Well, you know, they believe that they can match up with them physically. Uh, they believe that they work very hard. They're gelling as a team. Uh, they see our strengths as running the football, play action pass deep, be able to stop the run. And now we're getting pretty good against pass defense. Uh, you know, Josh uh, at corner, 
has done a great job for us. Demetrius has done a good job in the post, and we can tackle them. We really feel that we have a dominant special teams unit. If we win two out of the three phases, we can win the game. All right, well, we're going to talk about all three phases when we come back for one more segment with Coach O. You're listening to Trojans Live on KFWB News Talk 980. Wobbling kick caught by Aguilar. He's got all kinds of room. Gets to the 35-40 up the sideline. He's only got the punter to beat at the 40. Step back in, and he'll go all the way. Touchdown, Nelson Aguilar. Touchdown, USC. Get big savings on a big dinner. Stop by a Subway restaurant and get any three regular foot-long subs for just $14. Any day after 4 p.m. and all day Sunday. That's less than $5 for each foot-long sub. However you mix it up, any three regular foot-long subs are just $14 any day after 4 p.m. and all day Sunday. Subway, eat fresh. Limited time only. Add $1 for each premium or supreme sub. Additional charge for extras. Prices and participation may vary. Plus tax where applicable. May not be combined with other offers, coupons, or discount cards. The Happier New Year event is the one time of year you can receive up to $2,000 on a new BMW, like the X3. But we know what you're thinking. There must be a catch. So let's go through our disclaimers. Event may cause excitability and instant carification. Disbelief has been known to occur. Offer available for limited time only. So hurry in and receive up to $2,000 on the BMW you've always wanted. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Credit is applied against MSRP of final purchase, not title, tax, or destination. Credit allowance varies by model through January 2nd, 2014. For all offer details, visit BMWUSA.com slash offers. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm an over-enthusiastic football fan. We just beat one of the worst teams, but I'm walking out of the stadium celebrating like we just wrapped up a perfect season. <laughs> I'm so blind with excitement. I don't notice when I step into traffic and you have to swerve to miss me. So get all state, where agents help keep you protected from mayhem, like me. In San Pedro, call Allstate agent Michael Nevins today, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Are you in good hands? You may already know that AT&T is the nation's fastest 4G LTE network. And now independent researchers confirm that AT&T 4G LTE is also the most reliable. Whether you're connecting with family or getting the job done, you want a wireless network you can count on. AT&T, the nation's fastest and now most reliable 4G LTE network. Rethink possible. AT&T reminds you to never text and drive. It can wait. Speed claim based on national carrier's average 4G LTE download speeds. Reliability claim based on data transfer completion rates on nationwide 4G LTE networks. 4G LTE not available everywhere. Kessler drops to throw a screen. Does successfully to Buck Allen. Gets away at the 40. Up the sideline to the 30. They won't catch him. It's a touchdown USC. Yeah, Buck Allen takes the distance. He averaged 27 yards per touch last week. An amazing performance by Buck Allen on only seven touches, almost 200 yards. Tonight's highlights are courtesy of 710 ESPN. Welcome back to Trojans Live at the Lab. And, uh, Coach, you're uh, squaring off with David Shaw this week, a very good coach, someone you have uh, respect for, I'm sure. Uh, you know, what's typical of the David Shaw coach team? Tough, physical, well-coached, uh, going to play great in all phases. Uh, you know, they're very similar in the style that USC has uh, done well over all the years. Uh, remind me of some of the great teams that USC has had. Uh, these guys have won a lot of games together. They have a great system. They have a great belief. You know, Coach, of course, Coach Shaw was a byproduct of the staff that Coach Harbaugh had with at Stanford. How much has changed from when Harbaugh was there, now that Shaw's there? I mean, it's still the same Stanford. It looks the same from a fan perspective, is yeah. it? I, th- I think it's still the same. You know, you just continued on the staff has a belief system. They also have a belief system in recruiting. Uh, we did uh, an extensive uh, study on their recruiting. They've done a great job of taking three-star athletes and come, become great players. They Only 11 players out of starting uh, top 44 in the state of California, they go nationally recruiting and do a good job. Yeah, another question on Shaw. I, I heard them on the Oregon broadcast that Thursday night game. They talked about, I guess, Stanford's uh, plays are called by an offensive coordinator until they get into the red zone, and then David Shaw calls the plays in the red zone. When you're looking at film, do you do you notice a difference mm-hmm. between the two play callers? Yeah, there's a different style. There's no question. No, we do two different reports on the play callers. And uh, one thing about Clancy Pendergast, he's very thorough, and I know he's going to have a great game plan against these guys for Saturday. You know, he's coached against these guys a lot, and one thing that Clancy has not been able to do because of the style of team you've been playing is really settle into that 5-2 defense. Right. You know, with Stanford com- you know, coming in, is that what we're going to see a little bit more of the base defense this week? Yeah, we need to. That's what we do. Uh, that's what we're going to do. we got to give it our best shot going in there where we play best. 
And uh, that's the meat and the potatoes of our defense. That's what we do. And that's a big opportunity for Antoine Woods, the nose guard. Antoine's doing a good job. I'll tell you who really loves Antoine is our new D-line coach, Pete Jenkins. <laughs> He's like Antoine's grandpa. He's done a really good job of him using his hands. And we expect him to play very well. He played well last week. You know, and Pete has been instrumental in, ter- in terms of developing some of these guys, these new moves. The guys tell me some great stories about when he brings up tape and he goes, give me tape number 165. And yeah. he, they dial it up. How, how much of the how, how was the kids gravitating to that? They love him. And he had a tremendous uh, presentation on goal line defense today, <laughs> and he showed us some great goal line stops with some techniques up front. And our guys love it. He has an answer for everything in football. Just a great guy and a great teacher. A storyline the last couple years uh, before the Stanford game was trying to change to game plan against a three four defense. How much does it help this year that you play a three four defense and your offense has been looking at that all season? Really helps a lot, and it helps that uh, we don't have to make a lot of adjustments on offense. We can go get against each other. We can give each other the same look on both sides of the ball. Big time advantage. They're talking about a couple of the players from Stanford. Uh, whenever you talk about their offense, Tyler Gaffney, the running back, sort of sticks out. Yep. You know. He's pretty, you know uh, as the guy that you know that carries the ball a lot for them, he yep. had like 30 or 40 carries in one game. You know, what are you seeing from him on tape in terms of what he's able to bring to the table? Just a tough, hard-nosed runner, always falling forward. Uh, doesn't have many fumbles. Uh, is able to stay on track, follow his guards. They're a big power team, and uh, just always getting positive yards. And short yards, he's hard to stop. I ain't seen many people stop him yet. Has their offense changed a little bit with the personnel because they had all those great tight ends, and now they've got this uh, speedy wide receiver, Ty Montgomery, who's yeah. a devil in the kick game too, yeah. obviously something you have to watch out for. Has, has their offense changed a little bit with that personnel? A little bit. You know, last year they used to split out number 11 and uh, get one-on-one and throw the fade to them. Uh, now they're giving the ball to Ty Montgomery. I wish I wish we were defending number 11. <laughs> uh, Ty Montgomery is one heck of a player. He's very similar to the guy we saw in Oregon State. He give the fly sweep to him. Uh, tremendous football player. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, Trent Murphy, the defensive lineman, second in the country in sacks. I couldn't yeah. believe it. Second in the country in sacks. Is it a byproduct of the fact that Stanford is winning, or is he just that dominant? I mean, they used to talk about Gardner. He's yeah. hurt. He won't play. Right. Now, all of a sudden, he... You know, uh, uh, now it's like Murphy steps in. Yeah, just a, a well-coached defensive line. He does a great job of flipping his hips. We study him all the time. Uh, we know him like he'd be on our own football team, just a tenacious pass rusher. Talk about your team a little bit. Uh, obviously, you got Buck Allen in the backfield. Sounds like Silas Red maybe a no-go this week, but you could get a boost with Trey Madden back. Yeah, we expect Trey to be back. Uh, hasn't practiced much all week, but we expect him to be healthy. And so also Ty Isaac, he's a big back. He had a good game last year. He's getting better. And we have bucks. We're out to be out three backs and one into the game. Yeah, and going into this, also you get a chance that Marquise played was limited last week. Of course, now you have a chance for him to step up. How does he say? We're going to ask him, you know, eventually. What are you seeing from him? Uh, he looks good. Okay. <laughs> as long as he's ready. <laughs> Every time I see the stretch line and Marquise is stretching, I'm happy. All right. Good deal. Yeah. Finally, Coach, uh, your sort of motivational strategy this week. You know, where are you at? Are you, are you trying to keep these guys calm? Is this, they're already naturally hyped? Or where are you at in terms of, you know, trying to maintain the energy of your team? No calm about the Trojans, man. <laughs> we had a little motivational tape on Tuesday. We kept it quiet. Uh, they got a little surprise for them tomorrow. They don't know about it. And, uh, man, we're going to just keep on going. But I really feel that our big motivation is going to, when we step into the sold out Coliseum crowd and um, see the Stanford Cardinal come through, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great atmosphere for all our Trojans. Yeah, it sure is. You have been full of surprises all season. We're looking for some more on Saturday. That is a sold out Coliseum game, 5 p.m. It does not get any better than that. Thank you to Nicholas Garcia for tonight's tweet brought to you by Allstate Insurance. Football players rely on lots of coaches, quarterbacks, running backs, and special teams, just to name a few. But for insurance, you only need one coach, an Allstate agent. They'll help you with your insurance game plan. Call L.A. area Allstate agent Henry Morales or Allsop and Associates today. Thank you, as always, to Coach O. And coming up, we've got a pair of his captains. It's Marquise Lee and Hayes Pillard on Trojans Live. Aguilar takes it at the six-yard line, steps back up to the 20, gets to the 30, to the 40, cuts it across the field to the 50. He might go all the way, and he will. And it's a touchdown, Nelson Aguilar. If you're looking at a car, a truck, or an SUV, Ford has an EcoBoost engine for you. Listen to Mike Savage talk about his Fusion. The Fusion's EcoBoost engine's really 
really quick. It's it's a lot of power, and I just love that sports car feel. But I still get the fuel economy of a four-cylinder engine. Jen Bellotti picked an Escape over a BMW. When I'm merging onto the freeway, I step on the gas. It's super powerful. You can just feel it. Joe D'Angelo loves his F-150 with EcoBoost. It's got as much power as the V8, whether it's from a stop, merging, passing. The EcoBoost engine from Ford gives you the power of a larger engine with the fuel economy of a smaller engine. EcoBoost, it's miles ahead of the competition. Win a VIP experience for the big game on November 30th. It's the Ford Friday sweepstakes. Just go to usctrojans.com for official rules and enter to win two tickets and an on-field experience. No purchase necessary. Fusion EP a estimated rating of 22 city 33 highway 26 combined mpg 2.0 liter eco boost actual mileage will vary the ultimate fighting championship celebrates its 20th anniversary with ufc 167 george st pierre defends his title against johnny hendrix metro pcs presents st pierre versus hendrix live this saturday night only on pay-per-view. Cards subject to change. Use your remote to catch all the exciting UFC action on channel 795 or 797 in HD. Or call 1-800-TW-CABLE to order. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. So, you need hot dogs for the tailgate, salads for game day, and thirst quenchers for the cheering squad on the couch. Good thing Smart and Final has everything to make your team happy and score big savings. Smart and Final has low prices like Walmart, big sizes like Costco with no membership fees, plus the freshness of a supermarket in one place. Smart and final. Warehouse prices, big and small sizes. Through November 19th, save on Shasta Soda. 12 can packs are just $1.99 plus CRV. Must buy in multiples of four. Limit 12 total at Smart and Final. Buck Allen gets away at the 30, 40, up the sideline to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, and Buck Allen has done it again. 79 yards, touchdown, USC. Back on Trojans Live, Jordan Moore, John Jackson, and good to be joined by Marquis Lee, the 2012 Bolitnikoff Award winner, and Hayes Pilar, the team's leading tackler. I've been waiting all season for you boys. You know you had to come together, so we got the dynamic <laughs> duo here, uh, longtime friends. Marquis, let's start with you, man. For two years, you made this game look really easy. What's it been like this year, uh? Facing a little bit of adversity. <laughs> it's pretty tough. Um, um, you know, last year I didn't, I didn't really have to deal with you no know, teams really uh, planning on the game planning for me because I had Robert on the other side, so they was really focused on him. But uh, this year is quite different. Uh, most teams game plan, you know, as far as for me as a receiver and uh, try to double team and do things like that. So it's, it's been tough trying to get open. But I mean, Nelson and Darren stepped up and did what they supposed to do. Now, Hayes, it's been the flip side for you. You've been healthy. You've been playing well. The defense has been playing well. You know, talk about this year in terms of another year of growth and progression for you. Uh, most definitely. I, I give all the credit to my coaching staff, you know, starting with Coach O and all the way down the line to Coach Eckler, you know. Just having a fundamental sound defensive staff and just be able to be a peak performer in my game every day. Do you feel like you've, you've found a home in this uh, Coach Pendergast defense? Most definitely. You know, he, he separates us where we can all equally – have a fair share of the making plays every every game. You know, I just give the credit to the D linemen to be able to go out there and just show it like they have. You know, Marquise, every week we talk to Coach O about how the offense is evolving, getting better, you know, week in and week out. From your perspective, what do you see sort of as the change? I mean, the, the coaching is the fundamental change, but in terms of scheme and what and design of what you guys are doing, why are you guys playing so much better now than you were in weeks one, two, and three? Um, I just feel like uh, utilizing everybody. Uh, we know what we're capable of, and we know how many how many uh, players we got out there that, that that can you know actually do something for us. And uh, you know, Coach O stepped up. You know, they opened the field a little bit. You know, uh, allowing everybody to play. You know, uh, Coach T, by far as the receiver goes, you know, putting everybody in. And as far as running back goes, Bucks coming in, doing what he's supposed to do. So I mean, everybody is taking a, just taking account of for themselves and just handling the things they need to handle. You know, there's been sort of this great lineage of receiver recently, and now Robert passed it down to you, and, and you've had the opportunity this year to really watch Nelson come of age. You know, what's it been like watching Nelson really uh, just get better and better, it seems like, each week? I mean, you just watch him become a, a man. You know, you know, you don't expect, you know, a sophomore to come in, you know, become a man that fast, and, you know, Nelson is doing it. Uh, you know, you know, with me down, you know, he had to step up. Even last year, Nelson was a leader, and, uh, 
and he, he continued to lead the team. You know, one thing one thing he talks about is, is being a great leader for, for the young ones like Darius and everybody, and I think he's doing a great job at it. You know, Hayes, when I watch you on defense, I you know, a lot, pay attention to a lot of stuff that happens before the snap. And every time we play a team that has a lot of adjustments, shifts, motions, I always see your hand signals and really commanding the guys what to do. How complicated or how detailed is Coach Pendergast's defense to learn, and especially for you being your first year in the system? Uh, not really difficult. You know, I got in with Coach Pendergast early in the spring, so, you know, everything can be easy and I could be able to go out there and play fast. And, you know, you wouldn't be able to go out there on Saturdays unprepared. So, you know, just being able to get prepared Monday through Thursday and Friday. So Saturday you can go out there and play fast and making sure you can get out there and get with the defensive backs and the D linemen and knowing the checks that I'm about to make and knowing the things that's going to happen and special little tendencies that's going to happen as well out there. Yeah, it seems like there have been times this year where I see you sort of peek in, you know, on the center and the quarterback, and then you jump out. It's almost like you know the play is coming. I mean, how much more film work have you done this year? I mean, how much do you are, are you preparing you know, for each opponent? Uh, I'm doing a little bit of film work, but, you know, i got to give all the credit to the coaching staff. You know, they're a great coaching staff. They, te- they taught me new things and new tendencies to read, you know, even when they came in. You know, just being able to go out there and just executing the plan, just seeing – them to give us the answers to the test and we out there actually doing it. It's just actually fun to watch and knowing it makes me look good and the rest of the defense as well. All right, Marquise, I got to be honest with you and, 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 and analyze this one situation that I, ha- I, I have mad respect for you for this. You are, I don't know, 19, 18, 20 catches away from being all time leading receiver in USC history. With all the injuries, for you needed to be able to play in this game, there's a lot of sacrifice you did. You could have wanted to force yourself in just to go for the record. But you haven't done that. You've supported your teammates, you know, fine with all the rotations, all the things that's gone on. How hard is it, though, knowing that it's right there? <laughs> I mean, it's right there. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of different for me, you know. Uh, my thing is when I really focus on <clears throat> trying to reach that goal as far as, you know, trying to trying to uh, do too much, I, I like to say, you know, trying to, trying to focus on catching it just because of the record, that's when I tend to, you know, mess up. You know, my main focus is going out there and just doing it for my team. At the end of the day, uh, the ball will come my way. The first thing I think about is, like, well, this is for my team. This first down is for my team and try to get that. So that's what I really focus on at the end of the day. But, I mean, the accolades is coming and the, the records is coming. I actually didn't find out I was going to break that until, like, a couple of weeks into the season. Uh, but, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I know eventually it's going to come. we got enough time, but I'm not going to rush it. I mean, whatever comes to me, I'm going to try to catch it and continue to ask me about it. Well, it could come down to it. Does Rob know? I mean, is Rob hoping you come maybe just <laughs> one short? <laughs> nah, the one short is not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. At that point, he'll call for the ball. <laughs> exactly. Just, go ahead. just one more, Cody. Come on. <laughs> get the, finally throw that bubble screen again. We'll pull, we'll pull that play out of the book for a while, but we can get you one just to get the catch. You know what? Uh, I talked to Hayes after uh, Arizona State. You scared your boy a little bit over there. I mean, you, you know, it was not it was not a happy night. You know, I mean, how scared were you? Obviously, it looked like we might lose you for the season, and uh, and he said, you know, it was, it was hard watching his, you know, one of his best friends in the world down there, and you know, he didn't know what, what had happened. Jeez, <laughs> Jeez. Uh, it was tough. You know, I never I never really you know had a real injury like that. Uh, to make me sit out of game. I never, you know, I never said, you know, I had the ankle sprains and everything, but I still was, you know, able to play. But, I mean, first thing, you know, especially what's going on with us, you know, we, we had a lot of knee injuries lately, and uh, and that's the first thing that came to mind. Every time something always happened, the worst thing came to mind, the worst thing came come to mind was me sitting out the rest of the season. And uh, I wasn't trying to scare him at all, the other <laughs> players, but, I mean, at the end of the day, my knee was hurting, and, I, and, the, and the worst thing came to mind, so that's, that's all I was thinking about. So that's why I was, you know, tearing up and, and really worried about my future, you know, and, and, and just trying to get back. You know, that's that's something you don't want to go through. Your knees, is, especially me, you know, I move a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the knees is the most important thing, you know, for me, and, uh, and, and I find that very important, you know, to keep – keep 100% and that's what I plan on doing but I didn't try to scare them man but I'm glad they were there to support me they was around me even though the ref was like move they still was there <laughs> you know Hayes uh, the Stanford office I'm about tired of hearing about it to be quite honest with you <laughs> what do you have to do on Saturday to shut these shut the critics up about this office what what do you guys have to do defensively uh, just match their intensity you know just coming in the game having a physical mindset mental mindset and just going to the toughest team will play, you know, just going out there and just having fun most of all and just being, being able to be grateful to be able to match up with a team like this, you know, just showcase your talent on televised television. 
a month ago, I'm not sure anyone thought we'd be sitting in this situation, but, you know, you guys are the biggest show in town, <laughs> game days in town. I mean, are you guys just excited that, you know, everything's still on the table for you? Man, I mean, I mean, you just got to have faith. That's it. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, lost faith just for the fact, you know, we had a, a struggling season, but then you don't, they don't fully understand, you know, you're starting all over. You don't have Matt Barkley, you know. You don't have the line that you had when Matt Barkley's here. You just got a new line. You got a new quarterback. You got to get acclimated with each other, you know, at the end of the day. And, you know, that's that's where we struggled at. You know, it took us a long time to get it, but we finally getting it. And, you know, we're going to keep it going. We're going to try to get this win on Saturday. You're Fun right? to be a part of this team right now, huh? Oh, definitely. College game day. Do you guys didn't get up and watch it in the morning, or are you sleeping in? Man. Sleeping in. <laughs> <laughs> I got a game that day. I okay, can't wake okay, up. In. Okay. I'll be up. I'll be up. <laughs> we'll be up. We'll be, and we'll be watching you guys 5 p.m. Saturday night. Uh, everyone, a reminder, get any three regular footlong subs for just $14 after 4 p.m. And all day Sunday, Subway, eat fresh for a limited time only. We thank Marquise Lee and Hayes Pilar. Wish them luck. It's going to be fun watching you guys out there on Saturday night under the lights in the Coliseum. When we come back, uh, we'll talk a little Stanford, we'll talk a little business first with Steve Lopes in the house on Trojans Live. Trojan fans, each season the schedule is filled with pesky opponents looking to bring you down. But when that yellow truck and the little man with the hammer pulls up to your home or place of business to battle your bug opponent, insects and pests have no chance. For over 90 years, Western Exterminator has been in the trenches, dominating every matchup and every battle of the bug, which is why true Trojan fans know that Western Exterminator is the final word in pest control. We don't know what 2014 will bring, but we do know that right now you can get a credit of up to $2,000 on a new BMW. Then who knows what else could happen? This might be the year you write the next great American novel, paint a masterpiece, or date a supermodel. Anything's possible. The Happier New Year event is going on now. Right now, get a credit of up to $2,000 on a new BMW. Like the BMW X1, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Credit is applied against MSRP, of final purchase, not title, tax, or destination. Credit allowance varies by model for January 2nd, 2014. For all offer details, visit BMWUSA.com slash offers. Continental Tire is driving performance for you. Whether driving to the game, dropping the kids off at practice, or commuting to work, Continental makes the right tire for your vehicle. Our tires are designed with Eco Plus technology to deliver shorter stopping distances on wet roads and tremendous long wear. Plus, improved fuel efficiency, they can actually save you money over the life of the tire. Visit ContinentalTire.com to find out how much money you can save. Or to find a retailer near you. Continental Tire, exclusive tire of the Trojans. <coughs> Sounds like that's getting worse. From mild ailments to something more serious, HealthNet is here for you. We provide affordable health coverage that you and your family deserve. With plan benefits that include doctor visits, prescriptions, immunizations, and even free physical exams, HealthNet gives you peace of mind. Look to HealthNet for affordable health coverage for you and your family. We are your HealthNet. HealthNet of California, Inc. and HealthNet Life Insurance Company are subsidiaries of HealthNet, Inc. Want to help Valvoline Instant Oil Change go pink this October? By going pink, you'll be helping to fight breast cancer all month. Change your blades and change a life by purchasing pink or black wiper blades this October. And join Valvoline Instant Oil Change as they proudly support the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Stop in today, get your oil change, and ask how you can change a life by going pink this October. To learn more, call 1-800-FAST-CHANGE or visit VIOC pink.com valvoline instant oil change quick easy trusted now back to trojans live from the lab here are jordan moore and john jackson jordan moore john jackson and steve lopes the cfo of the usc athletic department talking a little sports business with steve and uh i think the first thing you know we've been talking about all week college game day coming to town i think fans would be interested to know you know, what that all entails. When do you find out about that, and you know, how's that all work? Sure. Yeah. You know, it's it's a uh, awesome thing to have game day back to USC. I think what is it, the tenth time? Tenth, I read? tenth time. Tenth the first time. time in the quad. Yeah. And and so they they have a list of uh, schools and games that they look at each week. And, and last week, you know, we, we were sort of watching new it as potential. In fact, after Stanford beat uh, Oregon, we then knew that this game became the uh, primetime game on ABC. So five o'clock national game on ABC, and then. When you know that, you you know, they have the number one crew of Herb Street and um, Musburger in here and those sort of things you start thinking about. <laughs> and then Baylor um, or Texas Tech lost, yep. I think. And then that, you know, started spinning. So on Sunday, Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, we started getting, um, you know, Saturday afternoon, Tim and I started getting texts, Tesla, and that 
you know, there's a possibility we're looking at it next morning, Sunday morning, they make that decision, they release it. And then, you know, the decision to come to campus was uh, awesome. I mean, it's a, such a small world we live in, but um, one of the guys at ESPN who's the vice president of programming down here in uh, Los Angeles, Elon ben uh was a student marketing intern for wow. us <laughs> way back when. We've got our marketing team here tonight. Those guys are always <laughs> show yeah. But Elon was a student worker uh, marketing intern for us in the USC Athletic Department. He went on to become the vice president of programming for college basketball, so he was the one that chose all the college basketball games. And now he's out here in Los Angeles. And since he's been a student here, he goes, Steve, I really would think it would be awesome to have game day on campus, right, yeah. in McCarthy Quad. So he sort of planted the seed. There's a lot of complications to it because homecoming is such a big day for USC and any campus. But um, we were able to work through logistics. We, we got everybody involved from the top of the university on down and, and said, look, um, it's a cool opportunity to have it right in the middle of campus. We can get things finished up. The nice thing is the game is until 5, so they finish the uh, broadcast at 9, and they have a logistics you know, team. that They, they say they're going to have be out of there by 11 o'clock that morning. So it, 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 worked, it worked out. It was pretty cool, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, to have it over the middle of McCarthy Quad is fantastic. They're like a pop-up shop. It's already up. I mean, you yeah. know, they just throw that thing up, and then they'll break it down instantly. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, with the other thing that's the hot topic around USC and, you know, and I compliment the athletic department because it's a stealth coaching search that's going on. You know, the, the process of going about it, we know that you're not going to discuss candidates or that kind of stuff, but the process of going about it, how difficult and how meticulous is it to, to go through a coaching search? Well, you know, it's interesting. I'm in the middle of two coaching searches right now because <laughs> we have our women's soccer program that we're looking for a coach for, too. But in, in the football case, which I know the answer, question is about, it, it's um, it's a challenge because I've, we've been through these a lot, of, and I've been through them a lot, but you typically don't have this amount of time. Uh, this is a long period of time. I mean, these decisions, and they are big decisions for the university and this program. Um, but a lot of times they're made in a very short window, and until your feet are in that fire, you have no idea how intense the pressure is and how quickly it has to turn around. But this is a different situation. I mean, we have basically a couple months to do this. And I can tell you, and, and you guys know Pat, he's a very meticulous, he's data-driven, uh, and he's given us uh, responsibilities to go out and research people and really dig into these guys and, and uh, find out what they're about and, and what kind of fit they'll be. At the end of the day, though, you know, until you sit down with somebody face-to-face and, and, you know, you can't really do that, of course, because people are, are still in their seasons. Right. You know, that's the process it'll go through. So we're trying to, to uh, do as much homework as we possibly can and understand these uh, potential candidates the best we can. Well, one thing that took a while was getting the Coliseum, but you finally got it done. Now, what, what, what do you see as the one, two, three-year plan to, uh, to really renovate that old building? Well, it's it's a fantastic opportunity. It's a lot of work, and, and it will be a, potentially a lot of money. But to the it's a great facility. We think it's you know it's an extension of our campus, uh, even though it's not on campus technically, but just to the south in Exposition Park. And um, you know USC is going to have control of it for the next 90 years. We have an obligation in the first 10 years to put 70 million dollars of improvements into the Coliseum, which we will absolutely do. But we want, I think, uh, you know, we want to take it beyond that because uh, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to, to do something over there. Um, so we've engaged a couple of uh, – Mark Jackson's taken the lead on that uh, project, but uh, we've engaged an architectural firm to begin the um, uh, a, a, a review of the op- options that we have in there. We've engaged a uh, marketing um, uh, consulting company to look at the, the – um, Logistic, or you know, the, the appetite for potential premium seating and those types of things, and we've looked at a uh, an engine, engineering firm to be a, a owner's rep to help us navigate through this because, frankly, we're not experts in big, massive right. projects like that. So you look around, and these companies have been doing this for other uh, colleges, universities, and professional teams around the country. So. There's, there's kind of a short-term plan, and then, you know, potentially as we look at these uh, these possibilities with the architects and with these firms, you know, to look at longer-term uh, improvements, it'll be fantastic for the stadium forever. You know, and I know that when you start talking money in terms of trying to, you know, retrofit the Coliseum, whatever you're going to do to fix it up, $10 million doesn't go a long way. I mean, $10 million is, is a lot of money for the you know, things that get done. How much can you possibly get done, especially with this first phase? Are we talking luxury boxes, premium seats? What, what kind of – like? JJ just wants his booth redone. You know? yeah. 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 Are, we talking the, are we talking the broadcast booth gets a little bit bigger? <laughs> the broadcast booth has to get smaller. It's oh, amazing. no. Yeah. I mean, this is a know, bad idea yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah. Broadcast booth? Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you go, you're with Arbo. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. As much yeah. room as he takes. But it was $70 million. We have to put $70 million. Oh, $70 million. Yeah, not $70 million. And – 
You know, that's a good question. And the we have some. There are some requirements that are going to have to take place immediately to get the the facility where it needs to be from a safety standpoint. Just things that repairs that need to be taken place because there haven't been a lot done to the place in, in quite some time. And then. You know, once we we uh, take a look at what the opportunities are, we, we can begin to prioritize what they are. I mean, it, you know, um, I think you'll see some some premium seating. Clearly, uh, you know, there'll be could be press box reseating in the bowl, improve the locker rooms, improve the. We want to improve the the um, fan experience. That's a big thing, and we've tried to do that even this year since we took over on very short term basis. And in terms of ushers and ticket takers being more friendly, wayfinding and signage and those sort of things. But from a, a fan comfort standpoint, I think the things you would focus on first and foremost would be concessions and food options and restrooms and those sorts of things. So, you know, not sexy stuff, but, right. you know, it's, it's an old facility. We need to make those improvements. There are a ton of things we wanted to talk to you about. We're running a little short on time, but I wanted to get one more into you. Uh, you're part of picking future opponents. Take us through that, how, how that process works of picking future football opponents that – deal for, with texas for example take us through how you got that that home and home deal done yeah so that's <laughs> it, it's a you know a process that we go through it's really interesting it's really cool we we're in a unique situation here and, and i could talk for an hour on this topic yeah. but uh you know we're in a unique situation because we play nine pac 12 games every year five home and four away and then we flip flop and what we have at usc which is really unique and different than most people is we have notre dame every year so we always start with five home and five away okay that's a given because when we play five uh, conference games home, we play the Notre Dame game away. So we start with five and five. So we have to do two more games every year. And, and um, what we've been doing in the past is is doing a, lar- a, a big non-conference game in a home-and-home home series. So, you know, we go back. We did Nebraska. We did Ohio State. We did Syracuse. We did Virginia. We did Arkansas. We have Texas in 17 and 18. Um, but in 15 and 16, we're coming off of the sanctions, and what we've made a, a conscious effort in 15 and 16, we're going to – because if you play a home-and-home home game, if you do that, one of the years you're only going to have six home games because you've got to go play to, at Texas. And what we want to do is try to have seven home games as many times as possible. There's a lot of teams that have eight home games. And so we're kind of even behind the ball when we do seven, and we're really behind if we do a six and six. So if you do a non-conference home-and-home home series with a big-time school where you got to return the game, you only have six home games that year. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Yeah. And so 15 and 16, we're concentrating on doing seven home games each of those years and not doing this big, um, you know, rivalry. Because, frankly, at our strength, the schedule is plenty. I mean, nine conference games yeah. in Notre Dame. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't have to apologize yeah. to anybody for strength of schedule. Right. So it, it, it's – but it, so we, we in 15 and 16, we're going to do seven and seven. And then we got Texas in 17 and 18. And then beyond that, we'll take a look and see where, where we want to go with it. Uh, exciting things. Collegiate Athletics has turned into just huge business. And Steve Lopes, obviously, in the forefront of that for USC. We thank you for joining us. When we come back, we'll get back on topic being Stanford and J.J.'s breakdown of the Cardinal as uh, Steve Lopes will be in the house Saturday night, 5 p.m. kickoff at the Coliseum. So, you need hot dogs for the tailgate, salads for game day, and thirst quenchers for the cheering squad on the couch. Good thing Smart and Final has everything to make your team happy and score big savings. Smart and Final has low prices like Walmart, big sizes like Costco with no membership fees, plus the freshness of a supermarket in one place. Smart and Final, warehouse prices, big and small sizes. Through November 19th, 12 bottle packs of Heineken, Pacifico, or Shock Top are only $9.99 plus CRV when you buy two. Limit two. Smart and Final remind you to drink responsibly. The Ultimate Fighting Championship celebrates its 20th anniversary with UFC 167. George St. Pierre defends his title against Johnny Hendricks. Metro PCS presents St. Pierre vs. Hendricks live this Saturday night. Only on pay-per-view. Cards subject to change. Use your remote to catch all the exciting UFC action on channel 795 or 797 in HD. Or call 1-800-TW-CABLE to order. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm an over-enthusiastic football fan. We just beat one of the worst teams, but I'm walking out of the stadium celebrating like we just wrapped up a perfect season. (laughs) I'm so blind with excitement. I don't notice when I step into traffic and you have to swerve to miss me. So get all state, where agents help keep you protected from mayhem, like me. In San Pedro, call Allstate agent Michael Nevins today, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Are you in good hands? 
Get big savings on a big dinner. Stop by a Subway restaurant and get any three regular footlong subs for just $14. Any day after 4 p.m. and all day Sunday. That's less than $5 for each footlong sub. However you mix it up, any three regular footlong subs are just $14 any day after 4 p.m. and all day Sunday. Subway, eat fresh. Limited time only. Add $1 for each premium or supreme sub. Additional charge for extras. Prices and participation may vary. Plus tax where applicable. May not be combined with other offers, coupons, or discount cards. Hey, Trojans fans. LG Electronics, official electronics partner of USC Athletics and proud partner of the NCAA, wants to help you do game day right with LG's full suite of home electronics, home appliances, and mobile products. You can't miss. So call up your friends. Get the food ready and put the game on visit lg.com for great offers on all lg products with lg it's all possible now back to trojans live from the lab back for the scouting report with john jackson i'm jordan moore game on make your move today to the lorenzo the most talked about apartment community at the university of southern california brand new upscale student living is waiting for you hurry spaces are going fast don't miss out immediate occupancy visit the lorenzo.com or call 213-863-4307 jj we talked a lot about uh, stanford with coach o but uh, let's get your take on it here too i mean you like everyone you, you sizing up these lines for me and uh uh, offense and defense and, and figuring the game's going to be won there? Obviously a huge challenge for the Trojans, and um, the game will be decided up front. But if you're USC, you have to try to get the game to the skill players because the skill players for SC are better than the skill players for Stanford across the board. So you, have to, you don't want to get caught up in playing their game or their style and trying to match it. You have to do it a little bit because you have to deal with trying to stop Stanford's run game. But the game will be won or lost from SC's standpoint out on the perimeter. When they lost to Utah, when Stanford lost to Utah, the one thing they did not do very well is tackle and, and run guys down from the perimeter. They took bad angles. They missed tackles. That's why you want to get out on the outside to try to expose that. It seemed like Stanford was telling Oregon what was coming, and they still couldn't stop it. So what can SC do different? How is SC different than Oregon? Well, I think that the, the, they're going to have to fit better. Remember, I think that the difference in schemes, SC's in a 5-2 where – um, where in the case of Oregon, they're in a 4-3, and they you know play just a different scheme. So you know, Coach Pendergast's defense will bring an extra guy up in the box. He has the ability with the linebackers to either you know drop them back in coverage when you need help or else bring pressure, which that's what they're going to have to do most of the day. But I think that the Trojans do a better job of getting off of blocks with those interior defensive guys. Coach Ogeron is one of the best defensive line coaches around. Don't forget that. They will, have a, they will play better than the Oregon line did. Everyone thinking close close game. You thinking close game, in which case maybe it comes down to the kickers or something like that? <laughs> I think it is going to be a close game. I think it, at the end of the day it's going to come down to the, the team with the biggest plays. Um, I think that both teams will struggle to run the ball because both both defenses know that's really the goal of what they, what they want to do. So they're going to stack up and stop the run. I think both teams are going to do a good job of committing to that. It's going to come down to the big plays. You know, Clay Helton's done a phenomenal job of play calling over the last couple weeks. Another repeat performance like that in terms of keeping Stanford off balance will be a Trojan victory. All right, J.J. will be in the booth for it. 5 p.m. start on Saturday. A coach who likes big plays is coming up next. It's Andy Enfield to close the show here on Trojans Live. The thing that I really enjoy about the Ford C-Max is that it is a hybrid, and I feel very new and relevant. For Kate Oxman, her Ford C-Max is more than just a car. I love the technology that comes with the Ford C-Max. It's fun. It's fun to show off that, oh, look, my car, I wave my foot magically underneath the lift gate, and it opens up. My perception of Ford has definitely changed buying the Ford C-Max. I really i have always liked Ford. I like that it has a very family feel to it. But now Ford is sexy, and it's got these fun bells and whistles. The Ford C-Max has an EPA-estimated rating of 45 city, 40 highway, and 43 combined MPG. Actual mileage will vary. It's saving me a huge amount of money, and I just like using less of what I call the Earth's blood. Win a VIP experience for the big game on November 30th. It's the Ford Friday sweepstakes. Just go to usctrojans.com for official rules and enter to win two tickets and an on-field experience. No purchase necessary. You may already know that AT&T is the nation's fastest 4G LTE network. And now independent researchers confirm that AT&T 4G LTE is also the most reliable. Whether you're connecting with family or getting the job done, you want a wireless 
network you can count on. AT&T, the nation's fastest and now most reliable 4G LTE network. Rethink possible. AT&T reminds you to never text and drive. It can wait. Speed claim based on national carrier's average 4G LTE download speeds. Reliability claim based on data transfer completion rates on nationwide 4G LTE networks. 4G LTE not available everywhere. Trojan fans, each season the schedule is filled with pesky opponents looking to bring you down. But when that yellow truck and the little man with the hammer pulls up to your home or place of business to battle your bug opponent, insects and pests have no chance. For over 90 years, Western Exterminator has been in the trenches, dominating every matchup and every battle of the bug, which is why true Trojan fans know that Western Exterminator is the final word in pest control. Now more Trojans Live. Jordan Moore and John Jackson back with you at the lab, and we're joined on the phone here by new men's basketball coach Andy Enfield, who just picked up his first win at the Galen Center and then signed a great recruiting class. Coach, can you hear us? Yes, thank you. All right, Coach, welcome to the show. Uh, Tell us about your haul this week. Uh, You bring in uh, three new players for the class of 2014, and it all starts with this point guard, Jordan McLaughlin. Well, we're really excited for the future of our program. We have some excellent players this year. We have four seniors that are graduating, so it's imperative that we went out and evaluated players we thought could fit into our system and be great student-athletes at USC, and we found three terrific ones in Jordan McLaughlin, Jabari Craig, and Malik Price-Martin. Jordan McLaughlin, as you mentioned, is a point guard, and a point guard is very critical to any offense, especially with our NBA style, up-tempo, and spreading the floor. You need a point guard that can make plays for his teammates and come off ball screens and really generate the offense. So Jordan is an elite athlete. It's six feet tall, and he's a great leader, and he's very well coached by Dave Kuttner at Etiwanda High School. And they won the CIF last year. He uh, had some big wins, and Jordan's a senior this year, and we expect him for him uh, and Etiwanda team. We're really excited to follow them this year as he uh, finishes his senior season. You Coach, one other thing, that when Jabari Craig, I know that you, you recruited him. He's 6'10". You know, the one thing that is sort of synonymous with your recruiting style, I believe, is to get athletic big men. How does he fit into that scheme? Jabari's as athletic as any big man out there. He's 6'10", with a 7'4 wingspan. He runs like a guard. He's quick. He's agile. He can block shots. He, he's great on the ball screen situations and running to the rim. You can throw it up above the rim. He'll go get it. Uh, Jabari is going to be a terrific player. I think if he develops the right way and he works hard, uh, he'll certainly be a, a pro at some point down down the line. Uh, but right now, uh, uh, we're just excited to have him join the fold. And, and uh, I think, as you said, I, I like athletic bigs because defensively, I really like to push the ball and, and get deflections and steals and block shots, and, and he certainly can do that. You know, I like what Pat Hayden said when I asked him asked him about his expectations uh, for this team and this program. And he said that you're trying to build a program and not a season. And to that end, you have done a lot of things to, to start building a culture around this program. One of the things I like, a little uh, redesign of the locker room, and it has your, your favorite phrase up there, which is when the sun comes up, you better start running. And I guess uh, maybe you can tell the story where this phrase comes from and, and how you like to use it. Well, it's, it's too... Uh Twofold. Number one, we, we're an up-tempo style team. We like to push the ball. We, we believe in uh, a shorter shot clock. So you have to start running uh, on the court. But it goes deeper than that. Uh, you have We have student athletes on our team, and we want them to succeed in the classroom, off the court. We want to get them uh, to know people within the business community of Los Angeles and on campus with the students and the faculty and the staff, et cetera. So uh, when that sun comes up, start running because you have a full day ahead of you. You you are a, a USC Trojan, and there's a lot that goes into that. And we expect them, from the time they wake up until the time to shut it down at night, to uh, uh, embody what a USC student athlete's all about. You know, coach, this fast, uh, fast pace, up tempo style, obviously became famous when you were at Florida Gulf Coast. You know, but really, and you and the, that team transformed immediately. Realistically, though, how long will it take for that style to really get implemented to these players where they are playing at a high level and have the t- kind of success you had uh, last year? Well, we scored 95 points the other night, so obviously our players uh, can do that now at, at some level. Uh, but there's different personnel in each roster, so you can implement similar styles, but you have to tweak it to fit your personnel. And Sure. I, I, Omar Arabi is our leading scorer at 16 points a game right now at eight rebounds. He's 7'2", 275 pounds. And 
D.J. Haley comes off the bench at 7 feet, 255, and uh, he's as good a defender at the, at the center position as I've seen from a position standpoint. And uh, they, they aren't necessarily the long, athletic, fast guys, but they're very, very effective, and both are excellent basketball players. So you can still play uh, the similar system or same system with different personnel. But, for instance, uh, last year my big guys didn't have any back-to-the-basket moves we could count on. They were very effective at running the floor, setting ball screens, running to the rim, uh, and, and getting them in position to, to dunk the ball or to shoot short jump hooks or layups versus Omar. We can throw the ball into the low post for him and play out of uh, that offense because he's so good with his back to the basket. So uh, uh, to answer your question, sure, we'd like to get more athletic in certain positions, but at the same time, you have to tweak your system every year to fit your personnel. All right, Coach. Well, you, as you said, you put up 95, made a pretty good opening statement at Galen Center, and you got a string of home games coming up uh, Friday night an 8 p.m. game at uh, Galen Center. And then next Tuesday, we want everyone to bring their canned goods to the USC versus Cal State Fullerton game. And you bring in some a uh, couple canned goods, you get a couple complimentary tickets. So Andy Enfield starting to uh, build his program here at uh, USC, and we'll look forward to having you on many times in the future. And uh, congratulations on your first win, Coach. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be back to wrap up Trojans Live. It's uh, Stanford Week. We're excited. You're excited. Is it football time yet? Almost. Almost. (laughs) Counting down. We'll be right back at KFWB News Talk 980. The Happier New Year event is the one time of year you can receive up to $2,000 on a new BMW, like the X3. But we know what you're thinking. There must be a catch. So let's go through our disclaimers. Event may cause excitability and instant carification. Disbelief has been known to occur. Offer available for limited time only. So hurry in and receive up to $2,000 on the BMW you've always wanted. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Credit is applied against MSRP of final purchase, not title, tax, or destination. Credit allowance varies by model through January 2nd, 2014. For all offer details, visit BMWUSA.com slash offers. Want to help Valvoline Instant Oil Change go pink this October? By going pink, you'll be helping to fight breast cancer all month. Change your blades and change a life by purchasing pink or black wiper blades this October. And join Valvoline Instant Oil Change as they proudly support the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Stop in today, get your oil change, and ask how you can change a life by going pink this October. To learn more, call 1-800-FAST-CHANGE or visit VIOCPink.com. Valvoline Instant Oil Change. Quick. Easy. Trusted. Continental Tire is driving performance for you. Whether driving to the game, dropping the kids off at practice, or commuting to work, Continental makes the right tire for your vehicle. Our tires are designed with Eco Plus technology to deliver shorter stopping distances on wet roads and tremendous long wear. Plus, improved fuel efficiency, they can actually save you money over the life of the tire. Visit ContinentalTire.com to find out how much money you can save or to find a retailer near you. Continental Tire, exclusive tire of the Trojans. Sounds like that's getting worse. From mild ailments to something more serious, HealthNet is here for you. We provide affordable health coverage that you and your family deserve. With plan benefits that include doctor visits, prescriptions, immunizations, and even free physical exams, HealthNet gives you peace of mind. Look to HealthNet for affordable health coverage for you and your family. We are your HealthNet. HealthNet of California, Inc. and HealthNet Life Insurance Company are subsidiaries of HealthNet, Inc. Now more Trojans Live. Back to wrap up Trojans Live. It's Jordan Moore and John Jackson. And obviously the big game, Saturday night, game day, primetime, ABC. JJ, could you imagine a month ago that we'd be sitting in this position? I think it has to be a record for a game day to actually have a team that's unranked hosting a team that's ranked number four in the country, whatever Stanford is. So, you know, I think it's a great tribute to what Coach O's been able to do. I can't wait for Saturday. And it, the thing is for the players, they have to get over the years past that Stanford has had the leg up on them. They get they over they overlook that, and they'll be just fine. Tonight's highlights are courtesy of 710 ESPN. Your on-site engineer is Bill Bingham. Studio producer is Michael Stark. Director of broadcast operations is Ann Beebe. Executive producer of Trojans Live, those are Dan Shale and Tom Fuhr. Thank you to Craig Kelly and the crew here at the lab. We'll be back here at the lab next Tuesday, November 19, for the next Trojans Live. Looking back at this big Stanford game, that's a Tuesday show. And Ed Orgeron will uh, be on the phone with us, and we'll preview USC's trip to Boulder to face the Buffaloes of Colorado. For George, for John Jackson, I'm Jordan Moore. Beat the farm, have fun. We'll see you at the Coliseum. Make a lot of noise on Saturday. Fight on.
You've been listening to Trojans Live, brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Visit SoCalBMW.com today to find a BMW center near you. Buy Valvoline. Charge on. But visit Valvoline Instant Oil Change first, home of the drive through only change and proud sponsor of USC football. Visit SoCalOilChange.com for special discounts and offers. By Allstate Insurance. Mayhem is everywhere. Start protecting yourself from mayhem with Allstate Insurance. By Western Exterminator, providing all-star termite and pest control you can trust for over 90 years. Western Exterminator, the final word in pest control. Trojans Live is an exclusive presentation of Fox Sports West and USC Sports Properties on KFWB News Talk 980.